Hi, this is Duncan from The Metal Epidemic. I'm joined with El Mino. Hiya. Yep. You guys uh, have just released your brand new album, uh, The Week in Sun, what, about just under four weeks ago, I think it is? Yeah. 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 Um, and are now out on tour in support of said album. Uh, we're in Edinburgh at the moment, and uh, you guys will be going on probably about an hour from now. I suppose my first question, because we reviewed the album, we really liked the new album, we thought it was brilliant. Um, relates more to the fact that there was a little bit tidbit in the PR that said that some of the material that's in this album is going to be appearing in a horror movie. I am a massive horror fan, right? Huge horror fan. Huge movie fan. And I wanted to start off by asking, how did that start? And did that preempt the recording of the album? Or was that in the back of the mind before approaching the album? Yeah, actually, that... that um, funnily enough, it's serendipitous that you ask us this to hear because uh, <laughs> it's my word of the day um, because we got that we got that DM off Eugene uh, who's the director of the movie uh, he was just he was a fan of ours he's an American dude um, and uh, sorry we just get the giggles quite oh, yes. easily <laughs> the movie is no longer happening uh, no 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 uh, <laughs> So to answer your question, <laughs> it is serendipitous that you ask us this in Edinburgh because when we were in Glasgow in 2022 supporting a lovely band called Megalomatic, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we out. were, yeah, shout out Megalomatic, we were uh, backstage after that, Zach had broken his leg the night before in Hull, we had got to the venue by the skin of our teeth and that she loaded on and played, mm. um, and yeah, then we saw a DM saying, hey, we're a big fan, um, making a movie, do you want to? First of all, they, they, they wanted Forced to Smile off Temple Corrupted, mm -hmm. our last record. Um, so we've done that. Also, Requiem from that album is going to be on there. And I think actually the whole... Miseria. Miseria, yeah, a few Miseria tracks. Um, and then they kind of had this brief for a new song. And it definitely started... This was 2022. Yeah. So this definitely was mid, like... We would demo, me yeah, and Zach. Half the demos for the album, yeah. Like I'd say, yeah. So there was half of the album. Half the album was basically demoed. Um, yeah, we were kind of like haunting. Ironically, mm -hmm. would have been the one that we were like, oh, this would make sense to be like a horror film. Mm. And then when basically when we sent Eugene the um, well the album, it was just like um, Phantom is like like perfect. Yeah. Like what? Yeah, there was a few because we were thinking of Luminous <laughs> as well, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This might have worked, but. Yeah, he literally, literally was. Phantom. Literally was like it was like a no brainer. It was like this is gonna be the opening. Like this, this is it. Like this, this is like this is perfect. <laughs> like yeah, thank you. So in terms of your approach to writing music, how much was that in your head when it came to writing the music? That you know we're writing lots of songs here, we're demoing. Um, but if we add a little bit more atmosphere, if we change the structure a little bit, do they make them more filmic, or was that a case of actually the way you write music anyway is inclined to be used in a movie? Fortunately, like um, I feel like if uh, most, how do I put this, like I say if an agent kind of approached a film director or whatever, mm -hmm. um, it might be more like that, but like he kind of hit us up uh -huh. and said like, we want to use these things. Yeah. And I was like, cool, well we're going into an album, like did you also want to like give us a spec? And we just thought The Haunting would be more realistic. Mm -hmm. um, and it just ended up not being what he wanted, but fortunately there was another one that was like, beyond the expectations that you set, which was yeah. very fortunate. We, we definitely didn't go into the process thinking we wanted to make cinematic music. Yeah. That's, that, that's like, I, like, personally I'm inspired by a lot of movie mm -hmm. uh, soundtracks yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And um, sure. Sorry, that's right. And uh, yeah, especially riff writing and soundscapes and stuff like that. Yeah. I love uh, the emotion that instrumental music can give to mm -hmm. a movie. Um, and then also like post rock and a lot of that like instrumental like um, soundscapey stuff mm -hmm. like if these could, trees could talk or this will destroy you yeah, yeah. like Mogwai and like bands like that which are cinematic bands and like mm -hmm. those bands could be soundtracking movies um, so I guess that was like a little bit subliminal in a way um, there's another word for you there yeah. that I thought Zach would enjoy um, <laughs> yeah. serendipitous uh, and um, yeah so I guess like we do. We I guess it kind of worked, but um, but we definitely didn't think the movie. The movie and the album are uh, they are they, they they happened at the same time, but yeah. they're not. They're not that that intertwined. Got you. Yeah. Got you.
So, like I said, new albums out. We noted when we were listening to it, there was a a kind of focus on a certain era that you you are far too young to remember. Um, but maybe your parents listened to it. Maybe that's where it's come through. But there's a lot of kind of a lot of like kind of mid to late nineties and then very early two thousands influence in it. Which, like I say, I was I was going to college at the time so it's kind of what I grew up with and it's one of the reasons I think your album stuck with me as much because there's a kind of nostalgic pang that hits and you just remember certain times and days gone by. Um, in terms of your approach to writing that though, once again is that an organic process? Are you listening to a lot of bands of that time or does it filter through creatively where one person comes up with a riff then the next next person's thinking well actually if you build on that and the song structure works its way through or mm. is it more thought out than that? Um, it's, a, it's a mix to be honest. Yeah. Um, so, um, um, yeah, it's a mix. Like, so I remember from the review like Deftones is like the obvious like you, what you said uh, Chino recording yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is yeah that's like pretty much bang nah, oh, that's some giggles, that then. really killed me <laughs> <laughs> I was like, absolutely pissing myself because uh, I think it was like Trent Reznor I can't I, did, I still need to check out the other band you said yeah because yeah. you said Trent Reznor and some this other band uh, Motor Greater Motor yeah Greater. so the guy that sang in Motor Greater don't let this put you off the guy that sang in Motor Greater now fronts Five Finger Death Punch oh, and he started right. off oh, okay. in a new metal band which had this one album that they've reformed and done, I think, but they had this one album and it's peak new metal. It's like, right. but all the melody on it is fucking incredible. Oh, awesome. And then he went off and did Five Finger Death Punch, sold multi million records and done all that stuff, yeah, which yeah. caters to a crowd that's not new metal inclined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, from listening to that, like, my, without re- rehashing my review, I thought Atmosphere and Spades, I thought your songwriting in general was like really, really, really clever. You switched up. Smartly, I think the vocals are chef's kiss good, but what I found about the album was the flow overall. I think like the oh, yeah. a lot of bands will just like record twelve songs and then that's what makes the album. But to me, I felt that the nuance and the way that the songs were put together was actually really smartly done. Um, so I always I get geeky about asking bands how that comes up and how conscious you are when you're writing that material about the song structure on an album. Does it even come in? To yeah, the top of premeditated. <coughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That the order of the record was decided before we even recorded right. the album. We recorded it we recorded the album in order of yeah. track listing, which is a bit unusual. Uh, which also if you listen to it, you can definitely tell we're very comfortable at the end of the record. Because I don't know, like I feel like maybe, maybe that's in my head. But um illusionist is like frantic and like fuck it. I mean, that's quite, like, it's nice that it translates like that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, yeah. Too, which is I think, that reflects yeah. in a nice manner. Yeah, and then by Soul Eclipse, there's this, it's almost like we've relaxed into it. And mm-hmm. we've, and we've, yeah. But no, Flow, Flow's super important to us. Um, I mean, all our favourite records. Yeah, even, like, the vinyl grooves at the end. So, yeah. Um, if you, yeah, if you don't have one, like, the, um, so when you hit, like, side A, by the end of it, like the the weird fucking modulated ring mod thing at the end of chains that like loops over for the last thing. So we've got like a vinyl groove so it just keeps yeah, so going back and back. Being static, it just loops around that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then the, ra- <laughs> the rain loops at the end of dust, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. But then on Spotify, the rain then goes into the start of dawn. The start yeah. of dawn. So it's like yeah. a full loop. <laughs> ah. So the entire album loops. Mm. See that's so we're, absolute, that, like, we're absolutely beaming that you asked us about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and, and I mean, if you want to get even deeper into it, yeah. the album's the waking sun that starts at dawn yeah, and then the dusk, and yeah. the whole thing is supposed to. See, be I like wait, uh, I wait that because I think if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna weed into doing something conceptual, yeah. I think you either go all in or don't bother don't, at all. There's nothing worse than a conceptual album that starts off really hot and heavy with a, a, like a really cool concept and by the midpoint it's kind of like well this song could have been on the previous album yeah. it could be on the next album yeah. doesn't really matter mm-hmm. um, and that's not to say that they aren't great songs but I yeah. think when you commit to that throughout the reward at the end of it for those that want to go a bit deeper is yeah. deeper I think one thing I'm quite proud of with The Waking Sun is the fact that all the songs on their own are individual songs that could work if you just chuck them yeah, on yeah. but and I think our last record, Temple, Corrupted, it flows like that, but I, I think there's moments on it where you you kind of, you press play and you're sort of like launched in and you're like, where the fuck am I? Mm-hmm. Um, and with this one, 
even <clears throat> some of the weirder moments like Orbit and Phantom and that area of the record, even chucking on Phantom, it you, mm-hmm. it's a song. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I mean, it's even, not. It's even, not like even deciding the set list for this tour, we sort of it was just quite natural to just play a lot of the songs in the order of yeah. the yeah. album. Yeah, like, yeah, 100%. We've, we, yeah, it just seemed like... We definitely had thing. to twist our arm not to play it, the album. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, For sure. It works really conveniently. There's other ways that we didn't realise that would work so well as like, yeah... I don't want to give like spoilers for the yeah, set, yeah. but... Yeah, we yeah. do mix it up a bit. There's some that like go like a bit too well. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I'm actually really surprised how well some others go into others, yeah. um, which is nice. So it's nice that it naturally kind of works, and I feel like it has that common denominator as a theme yeah. that could be continuously mixed and matched. But S- Structure and flow is, is like a big thing for us, 100%. I mean, all our favourite records, we grew up listening to like... Um, well, grunge and those and like and new metal, like yeah, you're yeah. saying, but also you know like prog and mm-hmm. like seventy stuff and that like those crazy concept albums like yeah. that go that Lou Browns and all that that crazy stuff. So we always we always want to like bring a bit of that into our. We're not saying we're prog, but like you know we're, yeah. we want to bring a bit of that. You into can you can bring over the mentality without necessarily yeah. trying to emulate the style. Yeah, and yeah. albums should be played front to back. Yes, I'm I'm an albums guy. I, I'm I I struggle more with age now to, to like just sit down and listen to like one or two singles yeah. if I'm going to sit down and go listen to the entirety of the album you started demoing in 2022 you said mm-hmm. in terms of from initial demos to recording is that a long process for you guys or do you lock in pretty quick when it comes to songwriting uh, well, I mean like so there's two songs on there so Chains and Screw Loose we've had technically yeah. for like seven years Mm-hmm. I think we played Chains for the first time in 2018. Yeah. And Screw Loose. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. 2017. 2017. Yeah. So we, 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 those two tracks we've just been trying to find a home for. But I mean, Chains is like, uh, I mean, we've almost put it on Temple Corrupted, but it was. It just didn't feel right in yeah. comparison. Like when we had the other songs together, so I was like playing at you, or speaking. <laughs> um, it just didn't feel like it was right. Like uh, also like big chorus, and I felt like even though the choruses are big on Temple, it didn't feel in the same. It's also like a pop song on Temple. Yeah. Song. yeah. 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 And on on the Waking Sun, it's a weird, uh, heavy, like post hardcore song yeah um, one thing I also wanted to shout out as well like Sam Coveney who um, produced the record he done a great job mm-hmm. of making it all cohesive mm-hmm. of the sound to be like conceptualised as an e- like, as a album as well like because um, I mean like from, from afar to listen to like the chorus of The Charm versus like I don't know the chorus of Illusionist I wouldn't have necessarily considered them to be a part of the same album yeah. and I, th- I yeah as much as I want to like blow on our <laughs> like two on our own horn I think that he Definitely yeah, put a big way in that as well. How long was it recording process? Two, uh, two, weeks. two weeks. Two weeks. Two right. weeks. Of, Fourteen days original yeah. tracking, yeah. and then, uh, and then we did. Uh, we went back to Brighton, so that was in Middle Farm in Devon. Mm-hmm. Um, we sort of squirreled ourselves away for for two weeks, and then we. Uh, sorry, Harry, you're right. Well, two weeks with a day off, so yeah, thirteen days, and then, um, yeah, and then we went back to Brighton to Small Pond. Shout out Small Pond. They're a great recording studio in Brighton. And we did things like percussion, yeah. backing vocals, um, On the Waking Sun, the song, Leah Stanhope from an amazing band mm-hmm. called Congratulations. Yep. She featured, oh. yeah, and just elevated that song to incredible heights. Have, like. you, sh- have you checked them out? Uh, we haven't checked out the band. Well, I don't know if you checked out the band. I, I, I haven't checked the band. Well, I liked about that as well as I, I, once again, I'm like getting it's like therapy for me today. Um, <laughs> when it comes to the inclusion of guest specifically vocalist guest vocalists like my personal belief um or philosophy on it is that it has to add an element that the band couldn't attain themselves yeah. uh, i think sometimes i'm not shouting at particular bands but they'll get their friends on that are in the same genre that play the same sort of music and then when you listen to it you can tell there's a different voice mm. there but it's not really doing anything that yeah, they no couldn't voice. do themselves yeah, yeah. really um, and it was a, it's a blind choice as well because it, it contrasts really well on the track um, in terms of because I always like to ask about the recording process but was there anything that was specifically challenging about the process overall coming into the album anything that like on surface value seemed like a great idea that when you got into it maybe was a little bit more complicated than you thought or vice versa 
Um, uh, Harry's mad grid in Phantom. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So tell them, tell them I wrote. I, I started writing that song out of spite. Yeah. Um, well, you see, you use the term. Yeah. It, it was quite malicious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris wrote the the little bass. Well, the end riff of haunting, and I uh, I really struggled to to play it. Mm. Um, so which I, in retrospect is easy. Yeah. Which is, yeah, yeah. Piece of piss. Yeah. And then and then so. <laughs> I can't even remember, is it 23 8? Well, yeah. on, the, on, the, on the Logic project that we demoed to, it's like 28, uh, 28 4 and then a bar of 23 4, which aren't time signatures. But then we work them out and it's like. <laughs> it's, the, it's literally a click. It's, mate, it's just a click going ding 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 ding. ding but everything's gridded and everything works and it's like, what the fuck have you done? And so we went in and it's like, when you actually like. Yeah, once you do pi, yeah, um, and <laughs> once you do cube it, pie, yeah. <laughs> you get a kind of yeah. time signature, but it's kind of three bars of three, and then a bar of five, and then four bars of three, and a bar of five, or something like that. But um, yeah, I programmed the drums <laughs> in uh, <laughs> so that it would be very hard for him to play it. Because as it was, <laughs> as it was. But playing it, uh, we, we we jammed it in the in the practice room and playing it. But yeah, obviously, Chris, you're doing it to a click, aren't you? So that's uh, yeah, it's 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 horrid. <laughs> you skip that. Um, so the that I love. Drumio, I don't know if you follow oh, Drumio. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm obsessed with Drumio. Um, even though I don't drum, but I, I just love watching people, how they approach, right? And, and um, Mike Portnoy's just had, I think yeah. it's like the, like the highest video oh, ever. Numa. The Nickelback. Yeah, and oh, you, see, you, yeah. See him, like, you see him trying to get the time of night. I, like, I obviously, have, I understand polygrams, I played in a band, I had polygrams, mm. so I, I, I kind of get that. But seeing his approach to it and how he was timing things out, and he's like, yeah, it's like, it's like nine, and then there's a there's an eight, and the guy in the studio's got that. You can see it's like five, and then there's what like he's trying to make it yeah, more yeah, simple yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah. But it's his approach to how he records it. But there's a certain point where he, he locks in, and when he locks in, he's fine yeah. from there. Um, so as complicated as things are, as long as you can lock in on it, you don't need to worry about the things it's, it's, it's just like everyone's different interpretations of time yeah. and and, uh, and rhythm is really interesting. But it's like the um, uh, there's a Radiohead that uh, Radiohead track videotape mm-hmm. where you, you hear it and it's like if you just hear the piano on its own it's four four yeah. then you see Johnny Greenwood on stage and it's like it's <laughs> like, like different different song yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mad he's hearing some strange thing going on but it makes very interesting music for sure oh. so your album's been out a couple of weeks like I say you're out touring it just now um, how many dates you got left for. Five. five, five days. Yeah, this is the fourth day. You yeah, got five yeah. left. Five yeah. left. Um, and then what's the plans for the year? I think I always ask this question, fully aware that your PR will be seen. Don't mention anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but any anything else? Well, they're not here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got we've got some festivals. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, well. I've been announcing some more gigs. Mangata. Mangata in yeah. Nottingham, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's gonna be really great. That's gonna um, be wicked. Yeah, I've got wait for that. Yeah, it's gonna be really cool. Um doing some other some support slots at the end of the year. Um and some headlines. We yeah. have a Love Day Festival Love in Day. Manchester. That's that's that'll what's be fucking announced, wicked. Isn't it? Love yep. Day in Manchester. Headlining that so that'll be really fun. Yeah. Um hopefully get some other surprises down the line in terms of releases and Stuff. I was trying to do the helpful looking, but I've just there's like no bar. <laughs> Absolutely no reception here, yeah. like okay. at all. Cool. Yeah, well, that's the thing, we can't remember what's been announced and what hasn't, mm-hmm. so we're like, sorry, so babe. Usually, why we don't get an answer to that question, you're just like, so, ah. go to Go to wellmiro.com. Yeah. <laughs> How easy is it to cut this out once it's recorded? No, it's not, it's not easy at all. Um, the last thing I want to ask, and this is purely, this is a selfish question. Uh, both myself and the guy operating the camera there grew up in a time period where we were borderline obsessed with Lockjaw re- records. Oh, yeah, right? cool. Hugely, like, we, that was our collection. That's amazing. Um, and I had just assumed that they had disappeared because I don't own anything recent from Lockjaw. How did that come about? Because they, as a label, historically, 
they were in a slightly different realm from where you are musically. And I, yeah. I don't know if yeah. that's a case of me just not being educated that they've broadened their horizons. They, or they changed ownership. Yeah, we, yeah, met, yeah, we actually met the owner. He did sound yeah, for us in the, the original the founder. Yeah, 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 he yeah. did sound yeah. and he was yeah. like, oh. Um, the original owner was uh, ben. 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 What a character Ben is, yeah. Um, but Rob Piper bought Lockjaw. Yeah. Uh, Rob's tastes are yeah, skate punky vibes. Yes. Um, but he's definitely into the more like other, you know, uh, arc tangent scene. That's yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, we were looking for a label uh, when we recorded Temple Corrupted mm -hmm. and uh, shopping around, and we were looking at you know that we had various different options. And then Lockjaw, we our friends drones had signed to Lockjaw. Yep. Um, and. Yeah, I think that's how we got in touch, wasn't it? And it was. then, yeah, Leslie was... Leslie also, who's uh, sort of uh, manages Lockjaw, so Rob owns it and Leslie manages it. Leslie, she's a big fan of all sorts of stuff, like like Tool and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And like, So I think she like really ex was excited about branching out and doing something a bit different with us. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it's, it's gone really well. And uh, yeah, they got sold to It's mad that you guys... We're old enough to remember them. Yeah, yeah, yeah We're it's old really enough cool. to remember them from that time period. So. It's a really interesting label with like crazy history. It's like uh, Muse released their first yeah, song on the UK. Show. Like very kind of mid to late nineties, the UK had the weirdest music scene when it came to alternative heavy yeah. music, and just a pocket of these small labels that were all doing really interesting things, and some of those bands went off to huge labels, mm. and. Instead of that traffic coming back to those old releases, for some reason it just never happened. Mm. Um, so it's always strange to see like these names pop up and you're like, oh my God. Of course, like I said, I was listening to these and I was getting that nostalgic pang of what it was like in late high school, early college. Awesome. And that would have been about the same time I was buying an album from Lockjaw. So it's a synchronicity, a weird synchronicity with day. it all coming together. So. Day. Is that it, on your toilet paper this morning? It was indeed, yes. Yeah, no. I, I'm assuming so. <laughs> that isn't, it's on my arse now. Um, I just want to thank you very much for your time. Um, like okay. I said before, we love the album. It is available. Uh, go and check out The Waking Sun, the band El Mona, and we are looking forward to checking you guys out um, in under an hour. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.